the eyes have it. The next item in the order paper is a legislative consent motion for the pension schemes bill. And I will ask the clerk to read the motion. That this assembly endorses the principle of the extension of the provisions of the pension schemes bill dealing with collective money purchase benefits, the pensions regulator, pensions dashboards and further provision relating to pension schemes as contained in clauses 52 to 102, 117, 120 and 128 of and schedules 4 to 6, 8, 9 and 11 to the bill as introduced in the House of Lords to Northern Ireland. Again, I ask the Minister for Communities to move the motion. Yeah, I beg to move. Thank you, Minister. The Business Committee has agreed that there should be no time limit on this debate. Uh, so I now invite the Minister to open the debate on the motion. Thanks very much. And again, I suppose I just want to apologise that this is a bit of a long speech because it's technical um, as well and to make sure that I don't leave anything out. So although pensions are a devolved matter, in general, pension policy and legislation here operate in line with corresponding pension provision in England, Scotland and Wales, and in line with Section 87 of the NI Act 1998. In addition, the Pensions Regulator, the Ombudsman and the Pensions Protection Fund all operate here and in those other three jurisdictions. And here in the North, provisions which mirror those made for uh, Britain um, elsewhere in the Bill were included in the Bill in the absence of the Executive and Functioning Assembly. And in order to ensure that the pension system uh, can continue to function properly with members' interest at its heart. As many schemes operate in here um, and across those other areas, it is highly desirable that the same regulatory framework is in place here and within the same time frame as is in Britain to ensure that those um, people involved in these schemes are still protected and to facilitate compliance, planning and enforcement. The Bill aims to help people plan for the future and to protect people's pensions by giving the pensions regulator greater powers to tackle irresponsible management of pension schemes, including actions by employers that could compromise um, the viability of a pension scheme. And I personally very much uh, support the principle that members' interests should be at the core of everything that we are doing. The Bill makes provision for collective money purchase schemes, also known as CDC, collective defined contribution schemes, where contributions into a scheme are pooled and invested to deliver an aspired benefit level. This builds upon and facilitates the initiative by Royal Mail and the Communication Workers Union, which have concluded that the CDC scheme would offer better outcomes for the workforce than a traditional money purchase scheme. It strengthens protections for scheme members to give the pensions regulator stronger powers so that savers can be confident that their pensions are protected and that the regulator is better able to take action if pensions are put at risk. Members will be aware of several recent high-profile insolvency cases where employers have failed to give the proper weight to their responsibilities to their defined benefit pension schemes. The Bill seeks to address this in a range of ways, for example, a requirement on those responsible for corporate transactions to set out how they will mitigate against any adverse impact on the pension scheme, and by enhancing regulator information gathering powers and its powers to ensure that those responsible, responsible for schemes comply with pensions legislation. There will also be new sanctions uh, on those who willfully or recklessly harm their pension scheme, including a maximum seven-year prison sentence and a civil penalty of up to a million pounds. The Bill increases transparency about individuals' pension savings by producing a framework for pension dashboards, a consumer-friendly digital interface to improve information for savers so that they can prepare for their retirement. It delivers a clear scheme, uh, funding standards and defined benefit schemes, and strengthens the regulator's enforcement of the improved system. This is particularly important in changing defined benefit landscape, with many schemes closed to new members or future accruals. The aim of this um, is to help trustees improve their scheme funding and invest in decisions and to manage potential risk. The Bill introduces new powers to protect pension savings, to help scheme trustees ensure transfer of pension savings are made, 
uh, to safe and uh, non-fraudulent schemes. It ensures the Pension Protection Fund can continue to administer the compensation appropriately, and the Bill also amends the definition of administration charges to make clear which costs are covered by the definition. Importantly, under the Bill, the power to make subordinate legislation and to commence provisions relating to devolved matters will, vest in the department for, will rest uh, within the Department for Communities. Likewise, the powers of control over the subordinate legislation will rest with this Assembly. The proposed changes are largely beneficial for scheme members. Pension dashboards will provide clarity regarding pension saving, while the introduction of an important safeguard and deterrence against those who seek to avoid their responsibilities relating to pension schemes. Pension reform in recent years has meant that more people are making provision or for their retirement through saving into a workplace pension, whilst that individuals also have more flexibility over their pension at retirement. And at the completion of the rollout um, across the jurisdictions, over 10 million people were newly saving or saving more into a pension as a result of automatic enrolment. Although most private sector defined pension schemes are closed to new members and or new accruals, the sector remains an integral part of the pension system, with around 10.4 million members relying on them. In addition, roughly 14,000 employers currently supporting defined benefit pension schemes and around 1.5 trillion in assets held by these schemes. The defined benefit sector um, is of crucial importance to the economy. The bill ensures the pension system is fit for the uh, future by strengthening the system and introducing important safeguards and deterrents against those who seek to avoid their responsibilities. The provisions here were omitted from the Westminster Bill. It should be necessary to bring forward a further Assembly Bill to ensure the pension systems continue to function and that scheme members are not put at a disadvantage compared to those in Britain. As the Westminster Bill has not yet completed its passage in the House of Lords and has yet to be considered by the House of Commons, it is doubtful that a corresponding Assembly Bill could be introduced until the autumn, at the very earliest. At best, such the Assembly would uh, be unlikely to complete this work before spring next year, assuming a slot could be attained in the legislative programme. I am also aware that the anticipated um, that there will be very significant demands across departments for bills to be progressed through the Assembly before the end of this current mandate. Including the provisions for here in the Westminster Bill allows these important provisions to be enacted um, at the same time as they are um, in the other three jurisdictions. This provides legal certainty for schemes and employers to allow preparatory work, for example, for the introduction of collective money purchase benefits and pension dashboards to proceed in tandem. However, the use of the LCM in this case should not be seen as a precedent or indication of how I intend to proceed further. I am aware of the Assembly's role in considering legislation and, in particular, the value of the Committee's scrutiny rule. And I therefore anticipate, subject to the necessary approval shortly, to bring a bill before the Assembly for the regulation of master trusts. I am grateful again for the support um, from the Committee um, and just in conclusion, um, I request that the Assembly agrees to the extension um, of NI provisions in the Westminster uh, Pensions uh, Bill. I beg to move. I now call Paula Bradley, Chair of the Committee for Communities. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker, and the Committee thanks the Minister for bringing this motion today. Uh, pensions in general are not often given the consideration they deserve, and few of us tend to think years ahead maybe not too many years for me, um, to a time when we will no longer uh, be working and have to live off state pension and whatever work-based pensions we have accumulated. Planning and preparing for retirement is, however, extremely important, and the provisions contained in this LCM will make that process more transparent and understandable. Of course, in a devolved institution, we would all like to be here today considering an Assembly Pensions Bill that deals with the issues contained in the LCM. However, the Committee was advised that it was unlikely that such a bill would be introduced until September at the earliest and not reach Royal Assent until spring of 2021. 
In the meantime, pension protections for people here in Northern Ireland would fall behind those in GB. In addition, officials noted that the working assumption was that an Assembly Bill would mirror those of the current Bill. This reflects the fact that while pensions is a devolved matter, for all intents and purposes in the UK there is essentially one system of pensions, and that includes numerous pension schemes in Northern Ireland. The Pensions Regulator and Pensions Ombudsman and the Pensions Protection Fund all operate on a UK-wide basis. Taken together, the Committee acknowledged that including the NI provisions in the Westminster Bill provides the legal certainty for pension schemes and members. It will ensure that, there will be enacted at, that they will be enacted at the same time here as in the rest of, uh, the rest of the United Kingdom and allow the industry to begin any necessary preparatory work. The Committee was also assured that the Bill to make subordinate legislation on the Bill will rest with the Department for Communities and the powers of control over the subordinate legislation will rest within the Assembly. Mr Deputy Speaker, Part 2 of the Bill establishes collective defined contribution schemes. These types of schemes would offer a target income at retirement rather than a specified income. If the scheme is under or overfunded, then the level of member benefits can be adjusted. This will ensure the assets of the collective fund are equal to the liabilities relating to the target incomes. The main advantage of that investment risk is spread across all members so that potentially there is greater certainty over retirement income. There is wide support for this type of scheme and in fact was advocated, as the Minister said, uh, by the Communication Workers Union and Royal Mail. The Committee recognises that consumer protection is at the heart of this Bill. Part 3 of the Bill in particular gives stronger powers to the pensions regulator so that pensions can be better protected. For example, there will be greater sanctions for those who willfully or recklessly harm their company pension schemes, including a maximum seven-year prison sentence and a civil penalty of up to £1 million. Part 4 of the Bill introduces pension dashboards and, as I mentioned earlier, having greater transparency allows people to better plan for their pensions. Gone are the days when a person would begin and end their career with one employer. Indeed, the government has estimated that an individual will have around 11 different jobs in their lifetime, and this means that many pension pots, which make it, there will be many pension pots which will make it difficult to work out just how much money you will have when you stop working. A pension dashboard is a digital interface which will present all our pension information from all sources in one place and therefore help you better plan for your retirement. I understand this was due to be launched in 2019, but perhaps the Minister could update us um, and we will actually see the dashboard um, actually operational. Part 5 of the Bill, specifically Clause 128, which introduces Schedule 11, helps strengthen the regulator's enforcement of defined benefit schemes. The Committee welcomes these new powers, which, among other things, will help scheme trustees ensure transfers of pension savings are made to safe and not fraudulent schemes. Mr Deputy Speaker, the Committee accepts it is advantageous that any changes to the regulations of pensions as a result of legislation is made across all jurisdictions at the same time to ensure compliance and enforcement. We acknowledge that the Bill will strengthen the pension scheme by introducing certain safeguards and enhanced sanctions. For those reasons, the Committee is supportive of the draft Legislative Consent Motion. Thank you. I call Sinead Innes. Uh, Mr Deputy Speaker. Uh, I thank the Minister for outlining uh, the, the proposed changes to the Pension Schemes Bill and for providing the rationale for bringing forward this legislative, legislative, legislative consent motion to the House. Um, as the Chair of the Committee has said, ultimately it would have been preferable to have um, additional time for scrutiny um, and to bring legislation via the Assembly, but I recognise the timing is a key factor here. And as these changes seek to provide additional protections, safeguards and options for members of the scheme, then any delay would be, would be, would be to the detriment of people here. I also want to concur with the, the committee chair's remarks um, in regards to planning for your retirement and how it's never too early to do that. And I think it's crucial that, um, that those uh, pensions should have the, the greatest possible security. Um, so this bill will return to the committee uh, before it comes into effect, I think around September time. And I look forward to the opportunity to debate it further there. Gurmagat. 
I call Mark Durkin. Thank you, uh, Mr Deputy Speaker. Initially, when I saw this item coming to committee, it's fair to say I, I winced. I think we, we had major concerns that not only we, were we asking another legislator to do our job for us, never mind what or who that legislature is, but we have been buttoned badly by a legislative consent motion in the not-too-distant past when the Minister's party and others gave consent to Westminster to legislate for us on welfare, and they ended up throwing in the ultra-draconian two-child rule and the barbaric rape clause for good measure. But while this Act relates to uh, protections and benefits for our citizens, and we must ensure that people here do not miss out on their entitlements, there was a genuine fear, shared by many members of the committee, that the goalposts might move and we could end up with a different piece of legislation, much less positive, and be powerless to do anything about it. So we were very pleased to receive assurances, uh, and the ministers reiterated them today, that any changes will come back to us. Uh, for scrutiny and approval, and we'll support this on that basis. But really, and, and every member that's spoken so far ha has, has said the same, that going down the LCM route is bad practice when dealing with devolved matters. We do recognise the need to do so here. It's yet another symptom of the three-year hiatus hangover, but we'll be supporting this. I now call on the Minister for Communities to conclude and wind up the debate on the motion. Yeah, no, thanks very much, um, and thank you to the members for their contribution, and again to the committee and the chair um, for their words also, um, and the support in terms of uh, the LCM and understanding the reasons why. Um, and just on the point raised in terms of the pensions dashboard, um, it hasn't been fully developed yet. There's no firm date at this point uh, for that. Um, and I suppose the focus is ensuring that it's the right type of dashboard that's developed without necessarily rushing for a time scale. But staff are continuing to engage on that, and once we have further information, we'll update uh, the committee um, as soon as possible. Um, and again, just to thank, um, I suppose, other members. I mean, I suppose if, if people were concerned in that, I mean, we don't hold our own financial levers. People will remember back in 2015 that there were financial sanctions being placed on this assembly and on the block grant that we get, because we can't raise our own finances. And if people are really um, sincere about um, calling out those that are responsible um, for policies such as welfare changes, then that would be the British government. Also, the impact um, in terms of all of these changes, I mean, I think if you're more looking at issues of partition and the impact of partition here, the fact that we can't, don't hold our own fiscal levers um, I think that would be a more um, genuine uh, debate to be had. That said, um, I am uh, keen to see this LCM motion go through for the reasons I set out, because it does bring protections. It ensures that people here living in the north, because we do have a system that works across the jurisdictions, that they aren't left behind when we're bringing forward these necessary changes, which is about protecting their pension funds and how those pension funds can be used. So I do want to um, bring this forward, and obviously I want to thank those for their contributions. And again, it is that commitment that any further changes I will certainly bring back to the House in terms of the scrutiny. So I commend the motion to the Assembly. Members, the question is, the motion standing in the order paper will be agreed. All those in favour say aye. aye. Contrary, no. The eyes have it. The eyes have it. And could I ask members to take their ease just for a few moments?